I was scared, uh, very badly frightened. I don't know what they are. I don't claim to know. I'm not sure I even want to know, but I know that they do exist. Awe, wonder, fear, all the results of contact with the Earth's humbling and disturbing power spots. The Earth's surface had certain energetic properties. Sights so powerful that they cause actual physical reactions. Spots ancient mystics marked with sacred monuments. But what was in the minds of these ancient builders when they constructed these colossal structures? These places have been deliberately placed in these locations of great natural power and energy. And that all the stone circles in England and Wales that all occur either immediately alongside a geological fault line or in a very close proximity. England, a focus of some of the world's most ominous power centers. The Avebury Henge, this colossal oddity is thought to be a site of immense mystical power and home to a puzzling light phenomenon. I saw this beautiful ball of light in the sky and I thought, oh, lovely full moon, because I love the full moon and starry night. And I watched it and I thought, oh no, ye gods, it's not the full moon. The moon comes in the opposite direction. Another puzzling energy spot, a 3,000-year-old vision-producing cave, the Bole Fugu. Just before the point of dawn, I was awake and I thought I could see spiraling movements, sort of soup of spirals swirling around. And they were very like the, um, the shapes on the tips of your fingers. They, they suddenly exploded into stars. There were lots of little pinpricks of light in with them flowing around. This is not unique to this cave. Similar bizarre images are etched in the walls of caves throughout Europe. The ancient Megalith builders saw these lights themselves coming out of the rock and would see them certainly as an expression or a manifestation of spirit uh, and perhaps therefore registered that effect in, in permanent carved forms on the rocks. Others report similar hallucinatory experiences. I came into the Fugu, I kind of began to lose myself in a way, so a feeling of timelessness for a few seconds. And then, quite suddenly, it was as though a scene unfolded in front of me. It consisted of a church and a churchyard. I remember the colours were very bright. In some ways, it was, a, it was like a dream, but at the same time, I was very much awake. I was aware of standing there, thinking, wow, this is extremely odd, you know, what is going on? Could the Earth itself be telling mystics where to build sacred monuments? Experts have discovered that many of the world's most sacred spots, when mapped, fall on straight lines. They are called ley lines and are said to be energy conduits. Imagine that the whole Earth is surrounded by a spider web of subtle energy currents. It can't be seen, felt, tasted, but the whole Earth is surrounded by these invisible force field lines. Those are ley lines. Invisible Earth energies all around us, beneath our feet, even running through us. Intuitively, we are drawn like magnets to sacred places. People flock to places like Machu Picchu, Stonehenge, Avebury, Glastonbury, and they don't always know why. The electromagnetic fields that are there are sufficiently stronger that they elevate and change your brain waves, moving you into alpha and theta states that are associated with creativity and insight and spiritual revelation. To access these energy spots, the ley lines must be found first. There's a couple of ways to detect ley lines. The first of which is animal behavior. Animals gravitate towards ley lines. Deer tracks, rabbit tracks, migration paths of birds, that sort of thing. The second is that they can be sensed and felt. 
It's not a clairvoyant sort of psychic thing. It's actually physically felt in your body. What dowsing does is simply to amplify that experience of the subtle difference in crossing through this invisible current of energy. Seattle, Washington, the Emerald City, a modern megalopolis with an eye on the past. If you begin to map out a city and you read the ley lines and you read the chi, it's possible to work with those things and incorporate them into design to begin to reduce violence and create a sense of creativity and spiritual inspiration within places. Seattle is the first city to map all of its ley lines. What we're proposing to do here is the exact same thing that was done all over the world by ancient people of every civilization. They found special places on the earth and then they used earth and stone to build places of power and sacredness for their culture, for their society. It's a layout of the ley lines and the power centers in the Seattle area. The crystals indicate where the ley lines actually enter the earth, and that's where the power centers created. These power centers are special places on the body of the earth. So by building beautiful artworks on these special places, we're healing the earth. We're making the earth more healthy, which creates a sense of world peace and harmony. Modern day monument builders are drawn to these sites. If we were in Scotland, Ireland, England, many ancient places, this place that we are standing by would have a stone circle, it would have a standing stone, it would have a mound, it would be a special place. But the city of Seattle has only been here for a hundred years. So this is a virgin power center. What we need to do is create a space here, put in a standing stone, a seating area to make this place special. Mapping the ley lines, they hope, will take the city of Seattle into a new dimension. The goal is to enhance the overall energy within the city of Seattle to make Seattle a better place to live, a more spiritual place to live, a more healthy place to live. Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries, why are strange lights stalking the residents of a tiny town in Texas? I think they're Satan's the people to tell you God's truth. As a matter of fact, I was scared, uh, was very badly frightened. The heavenly light phenomenon that could be a message. There are forces in the earth that are equivalent to those things in the sky. Southern England, epicenter for the bizarre. At the heart of a lot of genuine sightings of, of UFOs uh, are these balls of light. The mysterious demise of World War II bombers in the Bermuda Triangle. When this Avenger broke the surface, it was like bringing a body out of the ocean. And the sound that's driving people mad. A very deep, deep roar constantly. I hear it now. All that and our Unex Report next on Unexplained Mysteries. Explained mysteries. This strange planet. Nothing is small in Texas. Not even their mysteries. It's just there. And it's been there all these many years. It started out very slowly, but very brightly. There was a single bright yellow light. It was brilliant. The closer it got, it changed to a kind of a silvery green orb it seems to dance or move in a rhythmic way they weren't hostile they were very very friendly it seemed they didn't chase us they didn't descend on us and they were soft in color yellows soft greens blues I don't think there's any question about it. The lights are there. What these eyewitnesses are describing are the lights that have haunted the residents of Marfa, Texas for 150 years. These are Marfa lights. What they are exactly is a matter of debate. I think they're Satan's people tell you God's truth. They're ghost lights. And it's ghosts. <laughs> it was just eerie to me. Nobody else was afraid, but I was afraid. Lifelong Marfa resident, Vern Campbell, came face to face with the lights. He captured this remarkable image. I saw this light coming across the area and moving toward the power line. And 
I assumed that it was following the power line toward me, and I stood transfixed. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was scared, uh, very badly frightened. I don't know what they are. I don't claim to know. I'm not sure I even want to know, but I know that they do exist. In America, there are at least 100 zones that are regularly haunted by these curious light phenomena. Uh, one of the most famous uh, places is Marfa. Some experts think there could be a geological explanation for this disturbing phenomenon. These lights, nobody knows what they are. They're rather exotic phenomena. Uh, they're not UFOs. They're not flying saucers. Uh, they're somehow produced by the Earth itself. The lights have captured the attention of scientists from all over the world. Many come to Marfa looking for answers. This is a research work on the uh, fireball, the uh, so-called uh, uh, Marfa light. Uh, we believe this is a kind of uh, a natural phenomena. A natural phenomena means uh, some, this is uh, some kind of uh, uh, atmos atmospheric electricity. Spheric's expert, Edson Hendricks, specializes in recording the sounds of the universe. He claims to have captured mysterious sounds that are connected to the Marfa lights. I've been fascinated and almost obsessed by it, um, trying to figure out what could possibly do something like that. Darkness falls, hours pass, days pass, but the lights are nowhere to be seen. We watched and watched, but nothing we obtained, nothing filmed, nothing uh, I witness of the region. So he was uh, very disappointed. Suddenly, on the horizon. Wow. There it is. It's going again. It's flickering. Wow. It's got different colors. It's got red and yellow. And it's flashing. It's flashing very rapidly. Looks almost like a firefly. The eyewitnesses are stunned. It's very bright now. It's getting brighter. And uh, it looks a little bit red. It's it's dividing in two, the two pieces are moving apart, crossed again, and they're just continuing this. They're going back and forth, swinging back and forth, and they're, they're doing this as though, um, this is what I think people mean when they say that the lights are, are doing a dance. Skeptics think there is nothing at all extraordinary about them. We have no facts that illustrate that it's anything beyond the natural. There are some facts to indicate very strongly that what most people see are car lights on Highway 67. There are people who are skeptical, who believe that uh, what everybody sees are car headlights, but even the, the most serious skeptic could not possibly have seen what we saw and conclude that they were looking at car headlights because cars could not be made to do what we saw those lights do. Hendrix, like so many others, will not stop searching for the truth. Right now, I don't know what they are, and I'm continuing to, to work on that. I'm going to continue to look at it until I figure it out. For centuries, light phenomena have been seen from the ground. Recently, a new breed of lights have been recorded by NASA scientists well above the Earth's atmosphere. Well, over the years that we've been investigating ancient sacred places, we've uh, heard of accounts of people seeing curious lights. This extraordinary footage is baffling scientists. The red clouds are called sprites. The pulses of blue light, jets. And they seem to haunt the sort of places that the ancient megalith builders and monument builders are selected for, for their sites. I call them earth lights. And uh, we see uh, these curious lights have been seen by all traditional peoples. Unusual, sometimes visible energetic discharge phenomenon like the Marfa lights down in the southwest. In China, there are mountains with, with balls of light that supposedly dance around the tops of them. There are the Andes lights, there are these glowing spires that shoot up into the air above the Andes mountains. Are these lights a form of cosmic communication? Researchers like James Swan continue to look for answers. In the Earth, there are enormous telluric currents in the ground. There are probably equivalents to the sprites and jets. We just don't see them. When lightning strikes, the heavens and the earth are connected. And there are forces in the earth 
that are equivalent to those things in the sky. With further study, perhaps we will get the answers to many of the planet's mysteries. Hopefully what it will do is encourage NASA to start using remote sensing technologies to map out not only sprites and jets, but more subtle forms of energy that exist all around the Earth. Coming up on Unexplained Histories, this strange planet, England's hotbed of the bizarre. They look like orange balls of light. I couldn't explain it. In the back of my mind, I knew it wasn't a bird or a balloon or just something blowing in the wind. Markings found on Earth that have experts frightened. How is somebody going to go out there and put these at least a dozen, and perhaps hundreds, of swirls within the ice? Pilots who barely survived the Bermuda Triangle. Outside the window of the plane, it looked like you were flying an eggnog. And tragic reports of those who never made it out of the Great Lakes Triangle. We know there was no mid-air collision. We know there was no structural failure. We know the engines were operating properly. That ship going down must have happened no more than a minute. Uh, it just dove, went down, and that was the end of it. We'll re-examine all the facts in our RNX report. Stay tuned for more of Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, This Strange Planet. Planet Earth, 197 million square miles of breathtaking physical splendor. This is the product of four and a half billion years of relentless, naturally occurring forces. But there is an altogether different side of the planet, one full of forces that cannot be explained by conventional logic or science. It was only very short-lived, but for the five seconds it was there, it was tremendous. Avebury, England. A pastoral plot that seems to be a point of supernatural convergence. Not far from Stonehenge, this country plain is home to two strange occurrences. The crop circle activity in this area this year has been quite considerable. We have something in the region of 100 major patterns in Great Britain currently. Uh, over 90% of them are in this area once again. In addition to the mysterious crop circles, there are the frequent sightings of strange glowing spheres in the night sky. They look like orange balls of light. You could see that they were mushroom shaped, revolving uh, and emitting orange light soap from the bottom. We like thousands of lights spinning and rotating and the whole thing was spinning. I describe it as being spherical, uh, oval shaped, uh, silvery white, slight orange tinge. It came over from the left to the right of the trees and it went back and it came back again and all of a sudden it looked like it tripled in size and changed color to orange what are these strange lights some think they come from outer space at the heart of a lot of genuine sightings of, of ufos uh, are these balls of light cavorting around in the night sky perhaps coming down very close perhaps changing shape these lights appear to be moving purposefully and that's, for me, what sets it aside from the natural phenomena to one which may well be controlled by an intelligence of some sort, or indeed, in itself, may well be intelligent. An abundance of crop circles, primeval stone monuments, sightings of glowing balls of light, all near one small town in the English countryside. It is just conceivable that uh, some of the circles may result from uh, balls of light that just touch down and touch this very responsive surface of a, of a cornfield. I turned and I saw this glint and I thought, what's that? And automatically almost I picked my video camera up. Crop circle researcher Stephen Alexander has seen many mysterious things. None of them prepared him for what he captured on videotape one day near Avebury. And this object just actually curved round and dropped into the crop and disappeared for a while. And then it started maneuvering through the crop and it was glinting and flashing. It was a really intense sort of energy source, it seemed to me. Then you can see that object actually take off. And in the distance was a tractor driver. And uh, you can actually see the tractor driver stop as the actual object went over the top there. 
I couldn't explain it. In the back of my mind, I knew it wasn't a bird or a balloon or just something blowing in the wind. Um, I knew that was something important there. Experts have their own theories to explain the strange lights. It's quite possible that those balls of light are a glowing plasma, which is the same type of mechanism that we do think is involved in crop circle formation. Could these unpredictable lights be a critical link to the origins of crop circles? Most of the lights that are seen above the crop formations, and some of them are actually seen in the fields, there must be some connection, although at the present we haven't got that little thing that clicks the two together. There are unusual signs found all over this strange planet. The most disturbing of them are ice circles. These circular swirling patterns seem to be suspended in water. They are of particular interest to researchers because of their apparent similarity to crop circles. Here we've got some snow circles on a frozen lake that if you look closely at the structure of them is not unlike what you see in a lot of crop circles. Researcher John Burke has a theory. Plasma is nothing more than electrified air particles. But you excite the temperature of that plasma a little higher and it will begin to glow. If you have it heated enough to glow, then it makes sense that it might be heated enough to melt snow and leave a record in the snow. This is quite possible, a winter equivalent of crop circles. But the similarities between them ends when you consider one disturbing fact. A lot of this ice in which the circles are supposed to be happening is very thin. Too thin to walk out on and to measure. This eliminates the possibility for human intervention. Their existence is mysterious. How is somebody going to go out there and put these at least dozens and perhaps hundreds of swirls? And they're not even really cut. These weren't actually cut and beautifully you know, se separated rings. These were just swirls within the ice. Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries, the Bermuda Triangle swallows a squadron of World War II bombers. There are forces out there. You don't know what's going to happen out there. The stories of the grateful few who skirted death. We had $2 million worth of the world's finest electronic instruments just to put the crap out of us. It looks like you were flying an eggnog. The Great Lakes Triangle makes history by taking the Edmund Fitzgerald down. It just dove, went down, and that was the end of it. There's something that went wrong that they will never know about. And silently devours United Flight 389. We know there was no mid-air collision. We know there was no structural failure. We know the engines were operating properly. What makes this area so deadly? There's several spots in that end of the lake where you get a magnetic anomaly. And the final wrap-up in our Unex Report, coming up on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, this strange planet. Life on Earth is dependent on unseen forces to help us survive. But some of these forces can be deadly. 25 degrees north latitude, 70 degrees west longitude, the Bermuda Triangle. This plot of open water is the focal point of the planet's most frightening Earth mystery. Hundreds of ships and planes have vanished into the vortex without a trace. But what makes this area so dangerous? We have no uh, evidence whatsoever that makes the, the region described as the Bermuda Triangle any more dangerous than any other set of waters in the world. But for those who have lived to tell about their experiences in the Triangle, the story is quite different. I took the controls of the PBY about two hours out of Bermuda, and it really was a beautiful suddenly, day. As I say, we could not see the wingtips of the airplane. It was like flying in a we tube flying going through, through this stuff, and it never dawned on me I was in the Bermuda Triangle. Martin and Dee Dee Caden have over 50 years of flying experience between them. Nothing in their expertise could explain the bizarre incident they had while piloting through the Bermuda Triangle. The magnetic compass was spinning. It was totally useless. We had $2 million worth of the world's finest electronic instruments just completely crap out on us. 
Outside the window of the plane, it looked like you were flying an eggnog. You lose all reference to what's right, what's left, what's up, what's down, and many airplanes go into an uncontrolled spin and just come out of the sky and smash into the ocean. We had nothing from the outside world. We were in limbo. Then, without warning, the vortex released its grip. Little by little, all the instruments began to come back online. The gyros stopped spinning, the magnetic compass settled down, and all the electronic devices came back in and were working perfectly. Boy, once you experience it, you have a lot of respect for it. It's dangerous. The Caden story is only one of many about the region's mysterious powers. December 5th, 1945. Flight 19, a squadron of World War II Avenger bombers vanishes in the Bermuda Triangle. Historians have been looking for answers to the strange disappearances ever since. Recently, a World War II bomber was recovered 400 miles off the coast of Florida in the Bermuda Triangle. When this Avenger broke the surface of the ocean, it was the most spectacular thing I'd ever seen in my life. It was like bringing a body out of the ocean. The mystery still lingers. We're still working on it today. And Bermuda is not the only place where deadly triangles exist. With uh, Marysburg, what you get is the, exactly the same type of thing. You're getting down in around the Bermuda Triangle, disappearing people, disappearing ships and that. 15,000 accidents in the last 200 years. The highest concentration of unexplained shipwrecks, plane crashes, and other catastrophes in the world. This is the Great Lakes of the United States. The area's epicenter of devastation is the Marysburg Vortex. Navigational equipment like compasses depend on magnetic fields to function properly. If something disturbs that force, the results can be disastrous. We ran into uh, uh, magnetic deviation on compass fixes. We found even using three separate compasses, when we plotted that on a chart, uh, we were nowhere near uh, one case. We were a quarter of a mile on shore, and yet we're five miles physically on the boat offshore. There's several spots in that end of the lake where you get magnetic anomalies. Now, when you're coming through with a ship, your uh, compass can go out as much as 30 degrees. Now, if this happens when you're in a storm, you can be sailing in a circle and never know. The Edmund Fitzgerald, 729-foot workhorse, carrying over 26,000 pounds of iron ore bound for Detroit. This ship was headed for infamy when not one, but both of her radar systems mysteriously stopped working in a storm the Fitzgerald was built to withstand making this one of the worst of all the Great Lakes Triangle disasters. The Anderson was doing their seeing for him. It was trying to get the fix on the Fitzgerald with radar and then radio to the Fitz and tell them where they were. Without reason, the Anderson, a ship nearby, suddenly lost communication with the Edmund Fitzgerald. They were in communication with the Fitzgerald at 10 minutes after 7. At 20 minutes after 7, they had no sight of her at all. And the fact that no distress call was ever sent by the Fitzgerald, uh, that ship going down must have happened no more than a minute. Uh, it just dove, went down, and that was the end of it. And there were no survivors. We'll never know the real uh, reason behind its loss. I think in a lot of people's mind, there is something missing. There's one little fact of something that went wrong, something that happened that maybe we'll never know about. Something mysterious, something unexplained. The Great Lakes Vortex does not discriminate. It will take ships right off its surface or anything that flies over it. United Flight 389, bound for Cleveland. The approach was over Lake Michigan. The last uh, altitude that they were cleared to was 6,000 feet. Despite clear skies and calm weather, Flight 389 inexplicably plunged into Lake Michigan. The aircraft struck the water in a descending attitude. We know there was no mid-air collision. We know there was no structural failure. We know the engines were operating properly. 
Everything appeared to be normal up until the uh, aircraft disappeared. The disappearances continue to this day and continue to defy explanation. You haven't gotten the actual scientific measurement. How they can cause these mysterious disappearances? How they could cause the sinking? No one seems to know. Next on Unexplained Mysteries, the sounds of madness. A very deep, deep roar constantly. I hear it now. All they can ultimately do is leave. Drives and bonkers. I've heard of people committing suicide because of it. Is there a mysterious plot behind the sound that is ruining lives? I believe that they're using it for mind control. I believe that they're using it for communications. Can anything be done about it? There are people out there who are sensing something to make them ill. Something needs to be done about it. And you'll get the final summation in our Onyx Report on Unexplained Mysteries. power spots dot the globe. Could the planet be sending us signals? I didn't believe that I was hearing the sound. A handful of people living in a small New Mexican town are hearing it. And what they're hearing is driving them mad. I've heard of people committing suicide because of it. You're throwing it, trying to throw it off or you can push it away. It's life-threatening. I'm completely stumped what it is. A disturbing low-frequency hum is emanating from the mountain town of Taos, New Mexico. It sounds like a motor running, like a refrigerator running two rooms away, or a diesel truck idling off in the distance. A very deep, deep roar constantly. I hear it now. And the ceaseless drone is forever altering the lives of the few who hear it. These frequencies has, have actually caused me to lose my job. All they can ultimately do is leave. It drives them bonkers. It's like someone scratching their nails on a blackboard. It's obviously quite controversial in Taos because not everybody hears it. But of those who hear it, they're obviously suffering from it. And, and no one could fake a response like that. But what or who? is causing this diabolical hum. There have been a lot of studies about effects of radio frequency energy, even at low frequency, uh, on human behavior and physiology. At this point, we can't rule out anything as a possible source because we don't know what the source is. Perhaps something is going on of a large industrial nature in uh, western Utah, and for some reason, we are hearing it or some people are sensing it hundreds if not thousands of miles away. I believe that they're using it for mind control. I believe that they're using it for communications. Some believe the hum is the result of government testing of top secret radio frequency weapons. Well, the RF weapons uh, have become um, maybe the first kinds of non-lethal weapons could engender a cause and effect relationship, much in the way that drugs have a cause and effect relationship. Researchers from the University of New Mexico have gone to Taos to see if they can find what is causing the hum. The University of New Mexico has had to design and build equipment that will test the responses of these people to very low frequencies. And equipment like this has never existed before, so that's been the difficult part of the research so far. There are people out there who are sensing something which is extremely disturbing to them. Uh, many of them make them ill. Uh, something needs to be done about it. Until the origin of this noise is known, the people who hear it will continue to be at its mercy. I feel like I'm a victim of something that I cannot stop. They cannot stop, and there's nothing we can do. Next on Unexplained Mysteries, we'll bring it all together in our Unex Report. The bizarre lights stalking the English countryside. The cave that's making people dream while they're awake. The noise that's making people lose their minds. 
the mysterious vortex that is swallowing massive ships and commercial airplanes whole. The believers, the experts. All this when Unexplained Mysteries continues. report disturbing energetic phenomena haunts planet earth i was flabbergasted i don't think i've ever been the same since it appears in many forms as mysterious balls of light above avbury england i thought oh no ye gods it's not the full moon the moon comes in the opposite direction i knew it wasn't a bird or a balloon i knew there was something important there as unearthly ice designs, not unlike crop circles. This ice is very thin. How is somebody going to go out there and put these swirls within the ice? As disturbing lights above Marfa, Texas. They weren't hostile. They were very, very friendly, it seemed. What? Well, they just uh, have a big party up there. They're not UFOs. They're not flying saucers. Uh, they're somehow produced by the Earth itself. As a hallucination-inducing cave in Penzance, England. I kind of began to lose myself in a way, as a, a feeling of timelessness. I thought I could see spiraling movements, a sort of soup of spirals swirling around. As a relentless, barely audible hum in Taos, New Mexico. There are people out there who are sensing something which is extremely disturbing to them. Uh, many of them make them ill enough they've left the area. I've heard of people committing suicide because of it. All they can ultimately do is leave. It drives them bonkers. As a murderous water throughway in the Bermuda Triangle. But we had $2 million worth of the world's finest electronic instruments just completely crap out on us. Outside the window of the plane, it looked like you were flying an eggnog. It looked like flying through, like in a lemon meringue pod. And as a navigational death trap in the Great Lakes Triangle of the United States. That ship going down must have happened no more than a minute. Uh, it just dove, went down, and that was the end of it. Everything appeared to be normal up until the uh, aircraft disappeared. For some experts, these power spots are our connection to the world of the ancient mystics. And they seem to haunt the sort of places that the ancient megalith builders and monument builders are selected for, for their sites. They used earth and stone to build places of power and sacredness for their culture and for their society. For others, they are inevitable artifacts of a planet with so many forces at work at once. The whole Earth is surrounded by a spider web of subtle energy currents. It can't be seen, felt, tasted. We have no facts that illustrate that it's anything beyond the natural. It's hard for science to go out there and document it and dissect it because it doesn't happen all the time. This strange planet surrounds us with bizarre forces all the time. What exactly these forces are and why they exist is unknown. That is why they must remain an unexplained mystery. I think in a lot of people's minds, there is something missing, something unexplained.
I was scared, uh, very badly frightened. I don't know what they are. I don't claim to know. I'm not sure I even want to know, but I know that they do exist. Awe, wonder, fear, all the results of contact with the Earth's humbling and disturbing power spots. The Earth's surface had certain energetic properties. Sights so powerful that they cause actual physical reactions. Spots ancient mystics marked with sacred monuments. But what was in the minds of these ancient builders when they constructed these colossal structures? These places have been deliberately placed in these locations of great natural power and energy. And that all the stone circles in England and Wales that all occur either immediately alongside a geological fault line or in a very close proximity. England, a focus of some of the world's most ominous power centers. The Avebury Henge, this colossal oddity is thought to be a site of immense mystical power and home to a puzzling light phenomenon. I saw this beautiful ball of light in the sky and I thought, oh, lovely full moon, because I love the full moon and starry night. And I watched it and I thought, oh no, ye gods, it's not the full moon. The moon comes in the opposite direction. Another puzzling energy spot, a 3,000-year-old vision-producing cave, the Bole Fugu. Just before the point of dawn, I was awake and I thought I could see spiraling movements, sort of soup of spirals swirling around. And they were very like the, um, the shapes on the tips of your fingers. They, they suddenly exploded into stars. There were lots of little pinpricks of light in with them flowing around. This is not unique to this cave. Similar bizarre images are etched in the walls of caves throughout Europe. The ancient megalith builders saw these lights themselves coming out of the rock and would see them certainly as an expression or a manifestation of spirit uh, and perhaps therefore registered that effect in, in permanent carved forms on the rocks. Others report similar hallucinatory experiences. I came into the Fugu, I kind of began to lose myself in a way, so a feeling of timelessness for a few seconds. And then, quite suddenly, it was as though a scene unfolded in front of me. It consisted of a church and a churchyard. I remember the colours were very bright. In some ways, it was, a, it was like a dream, but at the same time, I was very much awake. I was aware of standing there, thinking, wow, this is extremely odd, you know, what is going on? Could the Earth itself be telling mystics where to build sacred monuments? Experts have discovered that many of the world's most sacred spots, when mapped, fall on straight lines. They are called ley lines and are said to be energy conduits. Imagine that the whole Earth is surrounded by a spider web of subtle energy currents. It can't be seen, felt, tasted, but the whole Earth is surrounded by these invisible force field lines. Those are ley lines. Invisible Earth energies all around us, beneath our feet, even running through us. Intuitively, we are drawn like magnets to sacred places. People flock to places like Machu Picchu, Stonehenge, Avebury, Glastonbury, and they don't always know why. The electromagnetic fields that are there are sufficiently stronger that they elevate and change your brain waves, moving you into alpha and theta states that are associated with creativity and insight and spiritual revelation. To access these energy spots, the ley lines must be found first. There's a couple of ways to detect ley lines. The first of which is animal behavior. Animals gravitate towards ley lines. Deer tracks, rabbit tracks, migration paths of birds, that sort of thing. The second is that they can be sensed and felt. 
It's not a clairvoyant sort of psychic thing. It's actually physically felt in your body. What dowsing does is simply to amplify that experience of the subtle difference in crossing through this invisible current of energy. Seattle, Washington, the Emerald City, a modern megalopolis with an eye on the past. If you begin to map out a city and you read the ley lines and you read the chi, it's possible to work with those things and incorporate them into design to begin to reduce violence and create a sense of creativity and spiritual inspiration within places. Seattle is the first city to map all of its ley lines. What we're proposing to do here is the exact same thing that was done all over the world by ancient people of every civilization. They found special places on the earth and then they used earth and stone to build places of power and sacredness for their culture, for their society. It's a layout of the ley lines and the power centers in the Seattle area. The crystals indicate where the ley lines actually enter the earth, and that's where the power center is created. These power centers are special places on the body of the earth. So by building beautiful artworks on these special places, we're healing the earth. We're making the earth more healthy, which creates a sense of world peace and harmony. Modern day monument builders are drawn to these sites. If we were in Scotland, Ireland, England, many ancient places, this place that we are standing by would have a stone circle, it would have a standing stone, it would have a mound, it would be a special place. But the city of Seattle has only been here for a hundred years. So this is a virgin power center. What we need to do is create a space here, put in a standing stone, a seating area to make this place special. Mapping the ley lines, they hope, will take the city of Seattle into a new dimension. The goal is to enhance the overall energy within the city of Seattle to make Seattle a better place to live, a more spiritual place to live, a more healthy place to live. Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries, why are strange lights stalking the residents of a tiny town in Texas? I think they're Satan's people, tell you God's truth. As a matter of fact, I was scared, uh, was very badly frightened. The heavenly light phenomenon that could be a message. There are forces in the earth that are equivalent to those things in the sky. Southern England, epicenter for the bizarre. At the heart of a lot of genuine sightings of, of UFOs uh, are these balls of light. The mysterious demise of World War II bombers in the Bermuda Triangle. When this Avenger broke the surface, it was like bringing a body out of the ocean. And the sound that's driving people mad. A very deep, deep roar constantly. I hear it now. All that and our Unex Report next on Unexplained Mysteries. Explained mysteries. This strange planet. Nothing is small in Texas. Not even their mysteries. It's just there. And it's been there all these many years. It started out very slowly, but very brightly. There was a single bright yellow light. It was brilliant. The closer it got, it changed to a kind of a silvery green orb it seems to dance or move in a rhythmic way they weren't hostile they were very very friendly it seemed they didn't chase us they didn't descend on us and they were soft in color yellows soft greens blues I don't think there's any question about it. The lights are there. What these eyewitnesses are describing are the lights that have haunted the residents of Marfa, Texas for 150 years. These are Marfa lights. What they are exactly is a matter of debate. I think the Satan's people tell you God's truth. They're ghost lights. And it's ghosts. <laughs> it was just eerie to me. Nobody else was afraid, but I was afraid. Lifelong Marfa resident, Vern Campbell, came face to face with the lights. He captured this remarkable image. I saw this light coming across the area, moving toward the power line. And 
I assumed that it was following the power line toward me, and I stood transfixed. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was scared, uh, very badly frightened. I don't know what they are. I don't claim to know. I'm not sure I even want to know, but I know that they do exist. In America, there are at least 100 zones that are regularly haunted by these curious light phenomena. Uh, one of the most famous uh, places is Marfa. Some experts think there could be a geological explanation for this disturbing phenomenon. These lights, nobody knows what they are. They're rather exotic phenomena. Uh, they're not UFOs. They're not flying saucers. Uh, they're somehow produced by the Earth itself. The lights have captured the attention of scientists from all over the world. Many come to Marfa looking for answers. This is a research work on the uh, fireball, the uh, so-called uh, uh, Marfa light. Uh, we believe this is a kind of uh, a natural phenomena. A natural phenomena means uh, some, this is uh, some kind of uh, uh, atmos atmospheric electricity. Spherix expert Edson Hendricks specializes in recording the sounds of the universe. He claims to have captured mysterious sounds that are connected to the Marfa lights. I've been fascinated and almost obsessed by it, um, trying to figure out what could possibly do something like that. Darkness falls, hours pass, days pass, but the lights are nowhere to be seen. We watched and 